So in this lesson, we're going to build our first Picasso JS chart. We're going to build a simple scatter chart. I'll just walk you through the process. We've got a good understanding of just how to build a basic chart in Picasso JS. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do in our mashup project files folder and in projects, I'm just going to create a new folder called Picasso JS. And then I'm going to navigate to that folder in Visual Studio. So that has just opened on another screen. So I'm just going to open that folder. So if you guys want to do the same. And here we have an empty uh, Visual Studio Code document pointing to our Picasso JS folder. So I'm going to create a file called index.html. And we're going to get started with just the HTML boilerplate. I can change the title here to Picasso JS chart. And the first thing we need to do is, in fact, load the library. So if we go back to the documentation and go to get started, you can see that we've got a script tag here pointing to this Picasso JS library. And this is the library here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in so we are loading our library. Okay, cool. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to just add a couple of, a bit of styling to our documents. Maybe first we can just close this for now. Copy the path. going to bring up the console and the network tab you can see that we are loading the Picasso JS library so that's looking good okay so I'm just going to add some styling so I'm just going to create some inline styles to keep it nice and simple I'm going to target the HTML on the body just in a margin of zero padding zero and a height of 100%. And what we want to do is we want to create a div to basically to hold our Picasso JS chart. So I'm going to create a div, set this ID to container, and then I'm going to target that container with some more CSS. So height of 80%. We don't want to take up the whole uh, the whole. Uh, HTML page and width also of 80% and position of relative. So we do need to set this relative position to our container and that is listed in the, uh, the documentation. Okay, so now we've got our div. So we've got our container div ID um, and we want to place our Picasso JS chart in that div. So we need to now write some JavaScript in this document because we are going to start coding out our charts. So we do need some script tags. And in the script tags, if we just type in Picasso.chart to actually start creating our chart. So a basic chart takes a couple of parameters. So we've got element. So element is going to hold basically the, the query selector to where we want to place our chart on our page. So in this element, we're going to target our div ID, so our container ID, and then data. So data is going to hold all of the data for our Picasso JS chart. Uh, you can see in the above lesson, I have added in just some data that we can kind of copy and paste into this chart to use in this example. We've got four fields, year, region, sales, and margin. Um, and we can do that in a second. So that is really the, the second important thing when we're building up Picasso JS charts is that we obviously need data. Then comes the settings for our charts. And this can be split into two key areas, really scales and components.
So scales, so Picasso Jazz scales are based on D3, D3 scales, and obviously very important when building out any sort of data visualization um, in terms of how we are scaling the, the data that we're, we're extracting in uh, to our visualization. And components is, are all the visual elements. So here we're gonna have our axes, maybe a legend if we wanna include a legend, um, and then the visualization type or properties themselves, whether that's a line, a bar, um, a point, um, or whatever it is we are, we are visualizing. Okay, so let's go to our element first. Now we've got our basic structure created. And we want to access the document object model. So we actually document and then dot query selector. And we want to find our container ID. Okay, cool. So next in data, so we've got a simple data type. We need to set the type here to matrix. This will obviously differ depending on the, the type of data that you're extracting in. Um, it will certainly change when we start to look at hypercubes. And then the data itself. So I'm gonna copy in the data set, which you can do also from, uh, from the, the previous lesson in this course. So I've just copied it in there. So we've got year region sales and margin across two years uh, for different regions in the US. Okay, so that is it for our Picasso chart data. Now let's look at our scales. So we wanted to find it's a, a scatter chart we're building. So we want to define a y-axis and an x-axis, and we can do that here. So we can call this anything we want, really. Um, you'll notice on the Picasso JS tutorial, they've called this S and M for sales and margin. I'm just going to call it Y and X for our Y axis and our X axis. Um, so on our Y scale, we actually need some data to map to this scale. So data we need here is we're going to point to our field of sales. So we're taking our sales field and we want to plot that on our Y scale. I'm going to add a couple of additional properties here, um, invert to true, to invert our axes and expand of 0.3. And this is just going to expand the top of our scale just a little bit higher than the top value here. Um, just to, to make that look, look nice. We've not got our maximum value right at the top of our scale. So that's one scale. And our second scale is going to have our margin data. And this is going to be mapped to our x-axis. Okay, so field here of margin. And I'm also going to expand this. Okay, so now we've got two scales, um, which is really the, the, the minimum we need for this visualization. And next we can move on to some components. So the first components I'm going to build are gonna be a um, two, two axes, so our Y axes and our left axes. So all components really, we can start with a type. And this is gonna be a type of axes and then scale. So we want this axis to hold our Y scale, which we've defined up here. And we wanna dock this on the left. So we're almost kind of creating the visual elements of our Y axis. That's why we're gonna dock this on the left. But really we're just gonna extract the data from this scale and display it in, a, in an axis docked on the left-hand side. And next, we want another axis. This is gonna be our X scale. And we're gonna dock this on the bottom. Okay, cool. 
Cool, so that's looking pretty good. Maybe we can just pause there for a moment, refresh our page and see if we actually have anything appearing. Which we don't. So it is very easy to make a typo, um, which I almost certainly have done. Maybe you guys spotted it. Uh, and you can see here we've got setting. Um, and this actually needs to be settings. So I would say do take a lot of care when typing out this code. It is very easy to make a small typo with this library. And uh, you know nothing's gonna render at all. So just by changing that to settings, Cool, now we have our axes. So we've got our sales now on the left hand side and our margin at the bottom. And if we just look at some of these values, you can see that almost certainly we've got our sales scale mapped to our y axis and margin to our uh, x axis. Okay, so this is looking good. So now, the next thing we need on our chart are actually the data points. So we're gonna to have to build out some additional components or one additional component here, and that's gonna be the point component. So we want some points to appear on our chart. Okay, so we can set a type just like above to point, and then we need to extract some data for these points. And we want to extract the field of region because we actually want to plot each region as a different point on our scatter chart. And next, I'm going to set some properties which we'll define in props. So now we need to also map our point values to our scales that we have defined. So I'm going to set our Y as our field of sales and our X as our field of margin. And next I can just define some settings. So still on our point component, but after our data, we can add some settings and I will definitely remember the S this time. And our settings, we need both our X scale and our Y scale. And we can add some additional settings here. And we can also add, I'm going to add an opacity of 0.8 to each of our points. So what our settings is doing here is actually just defining the visual properties uh, for our points. Okay, so hopefully I've not made another little typo and we can see if we have some points appearing, which we do. So that's pretty cool. Now we've got our data points all appearing on our chart. Now a couple of things um, here in our data, you could see we had two years, we had a year of 2011 and the year of 2010 right now everything is just showing in the same color so we're not able to distinguish uh, between those years so let's fix that now by adding color to our to our points so in order to do this we actually need to define a new scale and then we want to edit our components to actually extract the field of year um, and actually kind of visually show that scale as a color, um, as a different color for our points. So I'm gonna add in another scale here of COL for color and then data, we're gonna extract our year field I need some extra opening and curly, some curly braces in there. And we can add a type here of color. So we're adding, we've added some color to our scales. And then we can add an additional property for that color. So I'm gonna call this 
fill and we want the field of year and also in our settings we can add this onto the bottom so we need to map it to that scale so this is the visual property and we want to use our scale that we've just created of col uh, for that year color okay and let's refresh again and that's looking good so now we've got some different colors now appearing for our points you can see we've got this dark red for one year and our light red for the other um, so just going to make a final touch to our chart is by adding a legend so we want to add an, an additional component which i'm going to do at the top here just reformat that so let's in and add an additional component and the type here is going to be legend cat for legend category we're going to use our color scale and we're going to dock this at the top okay and we obviously need the type so that's looking good and if we refresh, now we've got a nice legend here at the top for our year. So we've got 2010 in that dark red and 2011 in that light red. Okay, so that's looking good. So that's our first chart built out in Picasso.js and that is all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna move on to adding an additional component. We're gonna add some brushing to this chart.